Ukraine has been invaded by its neighbor, the Russian Federation, and has seen troops from across the vast country of Russia enter its territory. The arrival of one particular group of people from the Russian Federation was broadcast by the Russian media, and this was the arrival of soldiers from Chechnya, the Chechens. Almost mythologized in Russia as hardened Islamic warriors, they hail from a small republic in the Caucasus known as Chechnya. But it may surprise you to know that they aren't the only Chechens in Ukraine, and in fact there are also Chechens fighting on the other side of this conflict, for the Ukrainians against the Russians, and indeed against these Chechens that have now arrived in Ukraine to fight against them. So what are these Chechens doing in Ukraine, and why are they fighting for both sides? Let's find out in today's video. A quick note before starting is that I will be giving half of the proceeds of this video to charities that are helping Ukrainian refugees, as well as those Ukrainians still trapped inside the country to continue their efforts and indeed to save lives. And if you can, it would be great if you could donate and there are some links with some descriptions of what the charities do in the description below. To understand the Chechens, we first need to understand Chechnya. It's an incredibly mountainous region in the Caucasus area that borders between Europe and Asia. And as such, the Chechens were a hardy people that lived there. Turning to Islam from the 16th century onwards, they were formidable opponents to the expansion of the Russian Empire southwards, and indeed continued to resist largely against them up until the middle of the 19th century. They were then incorporated into the Russian Empire and the ensuing Soviet Union, a union which fell apart in 1991 and which gave the Chechens a chance to once again restore their independence. By October of 1991, an armed militia loyal to Jokar Dudayev had taken over the capital of Grozny and held an independence referendum which had overwhelmingly come back for independence. And so the independent state, the Republic of Chechnya, was declared. However, it wasn't recognized by the Soviet Union, which was falling apart, and then the Russian Federation after it. And so it split from a neighboring state of Ingushetia, and with the advance of Russian troops into the region to stop an inter-ethnic conflict between North Ossetians and Ingushetians, Russian troops were suddenly on the border with Chechnya. This led in 1994 to the First Chechen War, during which time the Russians became involved in infighting within the Chechen state and attempted to overtake it by capturing the capital Grozny and by subduing the Chechen rebels. However, they completely failed in doing this. They several times captured Grozny, but time and again they were beaten back from the mountains by the Chechens, who proved to be incredibly hardy fighters, fighting to the bitter end in many cases. While the vast the majority of Chechens followed a form of Sufi Islam, which isn't particularly fundamentalist in its outlook. During the fight with the Russians, many jihadists from abroad, particularly those who had fought in the Afghan Jihad against the Soviet Union some years earlier, as well as others, joined the Chechen cause to fight against the Russians, particularly after this was called out to be a jihad, a holy war against an invader that was oppressing a Muslim minority. This served to radicalize many of the Chechen fighters to a form of Salafism as opposed to their Sufi Islam, something that would later come back in importance when dealing with the terrorism issue in Chechnya. Now, a peace was reached between the Chechen state and the Russians in 1996, but peace would only last for around three years, as in 1999 the Second Chechen War broke out. And this time, the Russians, under leadership of the Prime Minister Vladimir Putin, of course an important name for current events, were able to finally defeat the Chechens, because this time around, several of the Chechen warlords and their militias actually decided to join with the Russians and fight against their erstwhile comrades, who continued to fight in the mountains and indeed to hold Grozny several times against the attacks. One of these commanders who turned on his Chechens was called Ahmad Kadyrov, and he decided to support the Russians as they attacked Chechnya, and in 2003, with the campaign going largely their way, he was made the president of the new Republic of Chechnya inside the Russian Federation all the while fighting against those Chechens who rejected Russian rule as well as the increasingly Islamist leanings of those calling for a holy war within Chechnya itself. All in all, a very complex situation to describe. 
Now in 2004, Kadyrov was actually assassinated by anti-Russian Chechens, but his son, called Ramzan Kadyrov, then became the new president of Chechnya, and he remains the new president, or he remains the president of Chechnya, obviously under Vladimir Putin as part of the Russian Federation to this day. Now their militia was able to act and still is with impunity. Now they're called the Kadyrovtsa, basically those of the Kadyrov family. They are essentially the police and military force within Chechnya allied to the Russian state. And this Kadyrovtsa force is highly militarized and was actually in 2015 deployed to Syria as part of the Russian troops that went to Syria to engage on the side of Bashar al-Assad's government in the Syrian civil war. This was particularly useful for the Russians because of course the Chechens are almost all Muslims and so by sending them over to the Middle East, to Syria, a largely Muslim country, this would make it easier for them to interact with the local population without being seen so much as outside forces coming in to impose a new religion or a new way of life upon them and they proved to be highly effective in the Syrian theatre of war. Now what's interesting is actually that there were of course a lot of Chechens who refused to work together with the Russians and who had actively fought against them. And so in Syria these pro-Russian Chechens actually met anti-Russian Chechens as well. Many of them Islamists who joined various groups such as the Islamic State and others to fight in a holy war against the Russians and indeed against others that they deemed as infidels. And so Chechens were across one another on the battlefields of Syria and from 2014 in Ukraine. Now let me explain, as part of the crisis in Ukraine, separatists seized part of the eastern region of Donbass, creating two separate republics, one centered around Donetsk and one centered around Luhansk or Lugansk, depending on who you ask. And so pro-Russian forces were sent in to aid these rebels. This was done covertly at first with no Russian insignia, but there is a lot of evidence that Russian troops were sent in to help these separatists to break away from Ukraine as they fought an active civil war against the Ukrainian military. And as part of these Russian forces, volunteers, quote unquote, from Chechnya were also sent to fight alongside the separatists. There has been quoted that this figure was around 300, although perhaps this is only 300 at one time and others were rotated in, it's not quite clear. But there were definitely Chechens fighting in Ukraine's civil war in 2015, 2014, 2016, in these years. The Chechens were example present at the first battle of Donetsk airport, which resulted in a Ukrainian victory, but we know that the Chechens were involved there, as well as in some other cases. Now, as well as there being Chechens fighting on the side of the Russians as part of the Russian army or as Chechen paramilitaries, they were actually facing off against other Chechens who were fighting on the side of the Ukrainian army. The Chechens fighting for Ukraine are found largely in two militia battalions. One is the Jokor Dudayev Battalion, of course named after the first president of independent Chechnya, and another is the Sheikh Mansur Battalion, named after a famous figure from Chechen history who also resisted the Russians. Now the Jokar Dudayev battalion has tried in the past and was actually formed by Chechen refugees who had escaped to Denmark and from there vowed to continue the fight against the Russians, thus creating a militia battalion in Ukraine. They've attempted to get away from the sort of Islamist stereotype of the Chechens and haven't really pursued a strongly religious motivation for their battle against the Russians. They aren't, for example, jihadists. And even one member has said that why are Chechens fighting for ISIS? Why are they fighting against Kurds who have never done us any wrong? For Kobane, which they had never heard of before. That is not a Chechen war. This, here in Ukraine, is a war for Chechens. If we defeat Russia here, we are closer to freeing our homeland. And so this battalion is largely based on the nationalist side of the Chechen struggle against the Russians, as opposed to a more religious side, although clearly religion does play a part in it. The Sheikh Mansour Battalion, however, is more along the lines of other Chechen fighters around the world, especially with a kind of Islamist leaning on jihadist agenda that they have at fighting the Russians and then liberating their own homeland as well. What's interesting is that we actually know that the Sheikh Mansour Battalion 
uh, and I believe also the Jokar Dudayev Battalion were at times garrisoned in Mariupol, which is the city as well where the Azov Battalion has a important headquarters, Azov of course being one of the far-right militias in the Ukrainian army that was made part of the Ukrainian guards. And so I can only wonder about the campfire conversations that might have occurred between these devout Muslims and these far-right militia men on the other hand. We do actually know that one Ukrainian did actually convert to Islam as a result of having talked to the Chechens. So who knows, maybe bridges are being made in the Ukrainian front. These Chechen battalions aren't solely made up of Chechens, and there are a fair number of Ukrainians that also served alongside the Chechen men in the battalions, as well as several Azeris from Azerbaijan and from Georgia, of course Caucasus countries with large Muslim populations themselves. Now this takes us to the current events of 2022 when Russia outright invaded Ukraine. Videos surfaced from Grozny, the Chechen capital, showing thousands of Chechen troops preparing to be landed in Ukraine to fight alongside Russian forces. This was followed by an announcement by the president Ramzan Kadyrov that they would indeed be joining the fight against the Ukrainians as part of the Russian armed forces. It was quoted that these forces would number around 12,000 men, although it's unclear if there are more than this serving or fewer than this or whether this is just an amount that they have given. It's thought that the Chechens in Ukraine have been given a mission of capture and kill for both the president Volodymyr Zelensky as well as various Ukrainian politicians. However, it doesn't seem to have gone entirely to plan and the Ukrainian government has claimed that an important leader of the Chechens, a military leader, has been killed in Ukraine, as well as that a convoy of Chechen troops has been ambushed and that 56 tanks have been destroyed. However, from what I've seen of media coverage of the war so far, news outlets aren't really able to distinguish between military vehicles and so tank should be taken with a grain of salt, but it nevertheless seems that they have taken a hit in Ukraine. Now why might the Russians have deployed Chechen forces to Ukraine? There are a few reasons. In the past, the Chechens have been deployed as a sort of vanguard, a heavy assault force that can get the Russians out of a sticky situation because of their cunning and their determination to fight. It's also possible that there is an ethnic dimension here, as many of the Russian forces fighting are Slavs and are conscripted men who, it seems, don't want to be there and aren't popular with the idea of a war against fellow Slavic Ukrainians, many of whom speak Russian. It's possible that by adding in the Chechens, they might want to reinforce the backbone of the Russian troops that are there, especially because of the failures in the first week of the invasion, as well as perhaps hoping that the psychological effect of having Chechens deployed and plastering this across the media, saying that they were going to hunt down Ukrainian politicians, might break the spirit of the Ukrainian fighters and their leadership. But in fact, the opposite seems true and to date the Chechens have failed to make a significant impact on the battlefield. The only time will tell how this situation, this terrible situation between Ukraine and Russia is going to resolve itself, but for the time being it seems that Chechens will remain involved on both sides of this conflict. Alright everyone, that has been my video on the Chechens and their involvement in the Russo-Ukrainian war, this Russian invasion of Ukraine and also the previous years of fighting in what might become known to history as the Ukrainian civil war or the, the Russian disturbance in Ukraine but will no doubt be remembered simply as the prelude to the current invasion of Ukraine by Russia. Please do check out the links in the description below to various charities that are helping the people being most affected in Ukraine. Now I hope you've enjoyed the video, if you have any other information feel free to comment it below, it's always great to learn more from you guys about bits of history and bits of current events as well. Stay safe everyone and thank you for watching.